In this short video, we're going to talk about the derivatives of vector functions. Now, the definition is going to look very much like the derivative of a function of a single variable that we learned in Calculus 1. So we use the same notation. We say dr dt, where r is a vector this time, equals r prime of t, which will be the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient, r of t plus h minus r of t all over h. Of course, the limit has to exist, and we want all of the components to be finite. Now, this vector has the geometric interpretation, just like we saw in Calculus 1 of having to do with the tangent line. So it is a tangent vector to the curve. What does it mean to be a tangent vector? That means it's parallel to the tangent line. Now, we only say it's a tangent vector, of course, if it exists. And we also need that it's not the zero vector. Because the zero vector doesn't really have any uh, notion of direction. And so um, we want the tangent vector to give us an indication of uh, the direction that the curve is going in at that particular point or near that particular point. So the tangent line then is going to be parallel to r prime of t when r prime of t is well, even if r prime of t is zero, it's trivially parallel. But the idea is that when it's not zero, when it represents a tangent vector, then the tangent line is parallel to it. We also want to introduce the idea of the unit tangent vector. We use capital T to denote the unit tangent vector. And that is simply a unit vector in the same direction as r prime of t. So, and remember, how do we find that? We just take r prime of t and divide it by its magnitude. So let's look at some examples. Uh, we'd like to find the derivative of the uh, vector function r of t equals 1 minus t squared times i plus e raised to the power of t squared times j minus the natural log of t times k. And then we'll use that derivative to find the unit tangent vector when t equals 1. So finding the derivative really means just take the derivative of each component function, just like we did in calculus one. So we'll use the power rule to get negative 2t for the first component. Uh, we'll have to use the chain rule with e to the t squared. The derivative of the outside is just e to the t squared. And the derivative of the inside is 2t, so that's how I get 2t times e to the t squared. And then remember that the derivative of the natural log of t is 1 over t. So the last component, the kth component, is negative 1 over t. So now let's find the unit tangent vector when t equals 1. We'll start by finding the tangent vector, so we just have to find r prime of 1. That'll have components negative 2, 2e, and negative 1. And calculate its length. So I'll just take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So that would be 4 plus 4e squared plus 1, which I can simplify to radical 5 plus 4e squared. So my unit tangent vector when t equals 1 would be 1 over radical 5 plus 4e squared times the vector with components negative 2, 2e, and negative 1. 
Here we have a vector function in R2. We only have two components. So my vector function is R of t equals radical t plus 1i plus tj. So we want to sketch that curve. And then on the same axis, we're going to sketch two vectors, the position vector when, R, when t equals 3, so r of 3, and the tangent vector when uh, t equals 3. And we're going to place the tail of uh, r prime of 3. And I see I have a mistake there. Let me correct it. Uh, at the head of r of 3. All right, so how are we going to do this? We're going to actually write some parametric equations. So we're going to let x be the radical t plus 1 and y equals t. So if x is radical t plus 1, then x squared is t plus 1, which means that t has to be equal to x squared minus 1. And then if y equals t, that's fine. But just note that t has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 which would mean that y would have to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, if I put those two things together, then I'll get uh, y equals x squared minus 1, right? If t equals x squared minus 1 and y equals t, then that would mean that y equals x squared minus 1. So we're just going to get an x squared parabola with a vertex at 0 comma negative 1. That is the curve of this particular vector function. All right, so for part b, well, the position vector is no problem. We just have to uh, replace t with 3 and radical 4 equals 2, and then that'll be 3. So let's go ahead and sketch that. And then we'll need to find the derivative, so r prime of t. Well, the derivative of radical t plus 1 is just 1 over 2 times radical t plus 1, and the derivative of t is just 1. So let's go ahead and find r prime of 3. Uh, I'll get 1 fourth 1, so I need to plot that, and I want to put its tail right there at the head of r of 3, so at the coordinates 2 comma 3. And there's our vector. And sure enough, that vector is parallel to the tangent line at that point 2 comma 3. Well, we have rules of differentiation just like we did with our scalar functions, and the rules look very similar. So if I have two differentiable vector functions, u and v, I have a constant scalar k and a scalar function f of t, then I can say that I have a sum rule. So in other words, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. I have a difference rule. The derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. I have a constant multiplier rule. It says that I can essentially factor a constant multiplier out of the derivative. And then I have more than one product rule. I have the, the kind of usual product rule that I would see if I were to take the scalar function, multiply it times a vector function. It's the derivative of the first times the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now, mind you, f of t is a scalar, so this is just multiplying the vector times the scalar. But I have two other products for vectors. I have a dot product, 
And guess what? The product rule looks exactly the same. But now the instead of having multiplication, I have dot product. So the dot, the derivative of the dot product u dot v is the derivative of u dotted with v plus u dotted with the derivative of v. And the same thing holds true with the cross product. The derivative of the cross product u cross v is u prime, or the derivative of u cross v plus u crossed with the derivative of v. Now here we have to be careful of the order because the order of the cross product matters. So when I'm taking the derivative of u, it has to come first. I have to take u prime cross v. When I'm taking the derivative of v, then it has to come second. It's u cross v prime. And finally, we still have a chain rule. So if uh, I can write uh, my vector function as a, a composition, then I would just take the derivative of the outside and multiply it times the derivative of the inside. Let's apply this to find out this very interesting property that if you have a vector function whose magnitude is constant for all values of t, then we find that r dotted with r prime is 0 for all t. What's that saying is that the position vector is orthogonal to the tangent vector for every point on the curve. So that's a very interesting property. Let's see how we can prove that. Well, remember that the length of r squared is just r dotted with itself. So that would say r dotted with itself would be the length squared. Well, we said the length is a constant k. So r dotted with r would be k squared. So let's take the derivative with respect to t of both sides of that equation. Now, on the left-hand side, I'll have to use my product rule for the dot product. So I'll find that r prime dotted with r plus r dotted with r prime then will equal, well, what's the derivative of a constant? The derivative of a constant is 0. So now we can use properties of the dot product and write that as 2 r dotted with r prime equals 0, which means that r dotted with r prime equals 0. So that's a very interesting property. And we've seen a function like this. It's our unit tangent vector. The unit tangent vector, it is the unit. That's It's part of its name, unit means that its length is 1, no matter what value of t you calculate it. So since the length is 1 for all t, that tells me that if I take t and dot it with t prime, I'll get 0. So our last example is to find the, an equation for a tangent line to a curve, a space curve. And we're going to find parametric equations. Our space curve is uh, radical t plus 1i plus tj plus half tk. And we're going to find it at the point 3, 8, 4. So let's start by noting that uh, we have the position vector 3, 8, 4 when t equals 8. Let's just verify that. If I take 8 plus 1, that's 9. Radical 9 is 3. Of course, that's 8. And half of 8 is 4. So I just need to find, really, the direction vector, which will be parallel to the tangent vector. So u prime of t, I've taken the derivative. And I'll replace t with 8. So I'll have 2 times 3, so 1 over 6. 1 and 1 half as my components of the tangent vector. And so I'm going to choose v 
to be a vector parallel to that, but without any fractions. So I'll multiply that vector times 6, and I'll get a vector with components 1, 6, and 3. So the position, really, our initial vector here is given to us as part of the question. And so remember that the vector equation would be my initial vector plus t times the direction vector. And so I'm going to use that to help me remember how to find the parametric equations. So my position vector has general coordinates x, y, z. These are my components for my position vector and direction vector, respectively. So from that, I can get my three parametric equations, that x equals 3 plus 2, y equals 8 plus 6t, and z equals 4 plus 3t. Well, we've done differentiation. Next up will be integration.